Are you going to show us how to trim the bottom of the plate, too? Yes. Good. Good question. Um, and that leads in, I wanted to talk about this uh, plate, right? So it's about five pounds. And I got to pull the screen down. What am I doing? <laughs> So with uh, plates, they're one of the slowest drying things that you can make because they're flat, right? Um, like tall things will dry first because it's more open to the air circulation, right? And clay dries like how a candle burns. So candle burns from the top down right? And it will uh, suck out that moisture from the bottom and um, go out the top. So that's how things um, dry. And with plates being so flat, they're low to air circulation, and it just takes them a while to um, dry. So this is still pretty wet. I wouldn't trim this. Uh, I'll trim this next class. Uh, and I generally let my plates dry slowly. So if you dry them too quick, the tension uh, between shrinking will pull apart the bottom and it can create uh, an S crack um, right here at the base. So today it's stiff enough. I ran my wire underneath to release it and I'm just gonna let it dry. Um, like this, okay? So, any questions about plates? Did you wire it when you first made it? Yep. Okay, and yeah. then wired it again. Yep, yeah. Cut it after you make it, and then cut it again to release it so it um, shrinks, dries uh, with little friction, right? Because it'll pull this way and it can pull a crack in the bottom if it dries too quickly. So. Any other questions about plates? Cool. Well, um, put this to the side and we'll talk about our little pitcher teapot spouty thing. All right, so with the lid, uh, I did some quick hand trimming with my large tool here. So just kind of trimming off like I'm cutting an apple, right? So um, it's still pretty rough. Uh, and I could continue on using this, but the rasp works really well, right? We have these rasps over in the community tools here. And um, just pulling across and smoothing out that bottom works really well, right? So I'll just keep on going until that smooths out my base. And then I'll uh, take that out and uh, round out this flat part. And so all these trimmings can just go right in your bucket to get recycled. Okay. It leaves kind of a fun texture too. So if you're making something on the wheel, you can use these rasps to create a texture. It doesn't really show up too well on the video um, where, but you can facet 
like a thrown pot or something like that to make some flat edges on a round surface. And this is one of the best tools for hand trimming. Let's see if I can come up with a texture on this, make it a little interesting. That be, could be a nice quality to have. Sometimes people will make, you know, work that is a little surprising. You pick it up and you see that texture underneath. So um, we'll leave it there and see what happens, right? So, you know, I could take a little bit more time with this and smooth this out. For a demo piece, this looks pretty good. And so I uh, rounded out that flat part. It'll sit nicely uh, on top and um, works well, right? So fun thing with that spout, it has a little bit of a gap so it can pour water and the lid still fits pretty well right so there's my tea tea spout there um, and again because i put that on so wet i have all those little clay uh, little burrs on the inside i generally want to poke my holes when they're uh, dry leather hard so I don't get too many clay burrs. But how I um, can remove those is with my needle tool. And then slicing across and taking out all those little clay burrs. So it smooths things out. I can uh, go in there and kind of pick things clean. Again, I take my time with this. I would have uh, let this dry and then bore my holes and um, it would have been a lot cleaner, right? So, but I think it'll still function. We'll see. Demo pots are always kind of rushed a little bit, right? And then having this guy here, um, where I can add my stamp to the bottom. Uh, this is a fun one. Since <coughs> I trimmed that face, I have another cylinder here. Um, I'll show you how I make my tools or how I trim the bottom of my cups. I think I've shown this before in previous classes. Um, I have these PVC pipes with some wire uh, and I'll trim out the bottoms by sticking that in and twisting and that re leaves a really nice mark on the bottom. So that's how I trim all my cups now. Uh, it leaves a really nice fun line and it doesn't take too much time um, so I can run through a board of these fairly quickly. So if you give these a shot, they're just over on the shelves over there. Um, 
So it's a trick trying to make things centered, but just pressing in and twisting slightly. And we'll start to trim away that foot. And so I have something kind of like that. And then I can, you know, drop those into my reclaim bucket and just keep on uh, turning, right? So another thing I like to do is I'll smooth out the edge with a rib just to make the foot nice and uh, smooth on bottom and then round out the edge. So it gives it a little bit of a lip on bottom there. So um, yeah, something something for uh, to try, right? If people are looking for trimming and things of that nature, right? So that's that bottom. Any any questions about that stuff? Okay, cool. Um, a little Martha Stewart magic. Got my slab ready to go. So before I start and leave again, I'm gonna grab a cylinder. And partly why I didn't gather these up, these tools up, is so you can uh, see where I'm grabbing them. Right, so in the corner here, we have all these great uh, cardboard tubes. Um, so if you need them, now you know where they are, right? So I'm gonna use these forms to roll up a cylinder and I have these blocks that I've carved over my time here and um, we'll put them to use. Right, so it'll be using these pretty quickly. Okay, this is where the cornstarch really comes in handy. Um, so this is gonna be my top. This is gonna be my bottom. And I think I'm gonna start with my decorative blocks first. And this bottom edge is gonna be cut straight. So what I want to do is just kind of start pressing things in. These smaller blocks, uh, I can pad in with my hand. And because of the straight edge, I can follow that line all the way across. I'm just kind of rolling my hand over it. I'm not really thinking too much about pattern. Maybe thinking about like complementary patterns. What might go best to the next one or what have you. And if I need to add a little bit more pressure in a spot, I can localize that pressure by adding with my thumb. And I can go back in and line these blocks up for pressing down in and get a um, good impression. Impressions are important, right? We only get one. So there's a look at my bottom pattern. 
And I have some larger ones that I think I'll uh, start up on top here. I think I'll start with my spider web and just rolling over with enough pressure one time should be enough. If you add a lot of pressure and it'll um, take a little bit of practice to kind of get the feel for it. This is one of those um, assignments I do in the intro class and in the sculpture class, right? I'll just kind of continue on. Maybe I'll want to go back and that'll give it a little bit more of a even pressing. Then I'll switch this. I kind of, oh, do I want to switch it? Nope. We'll keep it central. So when I wrap this up, this is going to be the focal point of this vase. Do my Greek themed blocks. And I really like what's going on with the um, edge over here. And I'm gonna slice up this one. So it's straight over here. It'll be straight on the bottom. It'll be natural over here for a wrap. And we'll keep this edge up on top too. Right. So I'll continue on with my uh, texture on top. So pressing my block into the clay. And these come together relatively quickly. So this is why I kind of suggest if you guys have those blocks and want to carve uh, designs on either side, it works really well. I'll finish this one up with my waves. So I got my whole slab textured. I can put my blocks away. All right. So that's kind of the upside down look of what we're yeah. So I'll start with the bottom first because that will line up my sides. So I want to get as much of this I can. That looks about right. And eyeballing is a total perfectly good 
form of measurement. Things don't have to be too precise. So my bottom flat cut is right here. So I want to take that all the way up from there. If this side wasn't straight, it'd be difficult wrapping this around. Um, it's just what I've found if people want to have, uh, you know, a, a natural line wrapping around both sides, it'll give you um, a little bit of room um, to play with and have more of a natural looking edge. So before I roll this up, I want to lightly pick up my slab and lay it down so it releases. And I'll go, um, I'll start with my large cylinder. Right? So if you, if you can, lightly lift up your slab. and lay it over. And I want to make sure that the bottoms match up with my um, slab here, right? So I have my bottom matching up with my other bottom. And then when I go to place this up, take it vertical, and lightly set it down, right? So my cylinder here is going to support my um, clay, and then I can begin closing this up. Right, so how I want to close this up. Just lightly take my side in. I'll move this hand over a little bit, right? So I'm lightly bringing this side over. And I can match up this bottom here with this edge. And it's going to wrap around really nicely. I want to make sure I have enough room that I can remove my uh, cylinder, right? We'll leave it in there because I'm going to add pressure when I uh, score this together. But now that I have that set, I'll bring it over here so you guys can see it a little bit better. I want to draw a line roughly with my needle tool so that I know where to score. And this is going to be covered up, so don't be afraid to make it real, make it real messy. So it's kind of following that edge. This is where it helps to be ambidextrous, right? So pressing my serrated rib into my right hand. Now I have a bunch of great score marks that I can add my water into. 
So as long as you compress this together, you'll be fine. Okay, I'm not a huge proponent of just using slip. All right, so begin to wrap this up. I can bring my bottom over a little bit. And if you have a real soft touch of just rocking your hand flat and open, you're not going to change the texture of your piece, right? So I really like using these cylinders because I can hold it up here and I can adjust the base here and make sure things are nice and connected. And coming back up, wiggle it. Sometimes it takes just a little bit of coaxing. There we go. And then this is the fun part. Right, so you have a cylinder. My wrap is on the other side. I really want to highlight um, the front face here. So depending on what you have, I got my dowel rod in there right now. Or, maybe using uh, not quite as thin or a small circumference uh, like the dowel rod. Um, so this cardboard tube, I'm gonna move up to the side, hold on here and lift up. And I'll press down just slightly along the sides. And this creates like a little oval kind of shape. Right? So it narrows it on one side and widens it on the other. So I've got, you know, this, these central images over here with a pattern on top. And on the other side here, I have my uh, wrap. So a uh, little decorative, some things to kind of play around, right? With people who are making cylinders and things like that, you know, we give this a try, right? So uh, wrapping up cylinders, um, things don't have to be straight on top, right? If you're making cups, maybe they have to be straight, right? Um, wrapping up cups is the same way as doing this. So if anyone is wanting to make cylinder cups, I need a refresher, let me know, right? I can um, show you guys how to do that. Um, and then for, you know, the base here, pat out, uh, slab and um, use this as a template and uh, yeah, cut, cut your slab out and attach it, right? Um, this might be a little tall for uh, making a tripod foot or this will be the shape for a quad foot, um, but just some things to consider, right? Any questions about that? Cool. Great. Let me stop the video and I can yell at you.